But sir, I'll start with you. You, you have a media background. Uh, today, journalism is in a very interesting situation. Revenues are down, as you know. The public doesn't trust journalists. A lot of people write, blame the media for everything, social media. It's rarely you'll find positive things about journalists written. The government also doesn't like some of them. Most of them. <laughs> is it like, what's going on? Is it a good, like, is, what is it like to be in journalism and what's really your view on what's going on? Uh, thank you, Chadan, for asking a very relevant question and uh, timely question. It's in the context of the clampdown on news click. I think this is much more relevant. There's a tagline for, I think it is for Washington Post. The tagline is that democracy dies in darkness. It simply means that you can have a democracy only if you have a free and independent media. You have other countries uh, which do have uh, executive, legislature, uh, judiciary. Even the Arab nations do have. But just because those countries do not have a free and independent media, we don't call them as uh, functioning democracies. We claim to be a democracy, functioning democracy, because we had a reasonably free, independent media. But... Uh, I'm sorry to say that I won't claim that India does have a free media now. Firstly, now uh, awfully journalism uh, has got into the lexicon of terrorism. Journalism is equal to terrorism. If you're a journalist, you're a terrorist. Simple as that. That is, that is what has been proven in uh, news click case. You asked a very relevant question. Now there are two uh, threats on uh, journalism. First is that I think every chief editor of every media houses sit in PMO. Avinash, am I correct? Yeah, absolutely correct. He said so. Is the PMO which is the chief editor for every media now. They decides what to be discussed uh, every evening and uh, even the uh, so-called Hindu, Muslim, uh, all these polarization issues. Second, there's a threat on the corporate houses which run the media. So two way there are threats. So the independence of the media has been, journalists have been breached. Now, as regards the news click incident, I would say I have never seen such bogus uh, charges being heaped on a media houses. Why don't you report on uh, farm laws? Why don't you cover daily rights? Why don't you support the farmers' agitation? Can you ever think about such a situ situation in a democracy? And 46 hapless journalists have been raided. And the so-called China connection, you, Chetan, you know, I mean, you, you have been observing the international politics also, you write a lot about it. See, the trade between India and China has gone up like anything. The trade deficit, when this government came, it was, which was 48 billion US dollars, now it is more than 100 billion dollars. Many of the Chinese com companies contributed to the PM care. Doesn't mean that the Delhi police has to, I mean, uh, raid the PMO. So what is the so-called talk about Chinese connection? And RBA must have cleared the money from US. And there are a n number of ways in which you can look at how, whether the money has been brought in a clandestine way or I mean whether the money is good money or not. So I would say that there is a death blow to the independent free media in this country. And I don't think even the journalists would say that there is a free media in this country. So, this is the hapless situation in this country. Sir just said, BJP Mukt uh, South is happening. That's his thing. I, I asked this to the previous speaker as well. John, I want to ask you this. And it, because this is a very natural curiosity question. At least, I think the southern people are extremely religious, extremely believe in faith. My own wedding was done South Indian style. And there were so many priests. And then I remember my Punjabi cousins asked, when is the dancing? And they said, what dancing? There's no dancing in, it's a very serious, but yet, like, so there is so much influence of religion at every step. There are so many pujas, everything, but the Hindutva doesn't catch on here so well. You also commented in another conclave, I, I saw a clip which has became viral about, let me put it mildly, you didn't like the Adhisirs hanging out in parliament on the inauguration day. Sanyasis? Adhisi? Is there? Sengals? Sengol. Ah. Yeah, you, you well, had your own. Why should there be a Sengol? Yeah, uh, no, so that also. No, I, and, I, I, and the broader question, why doesn't it catch on here? Yes. Like it, and it has caught on in the north. See, uh, my friend Narayanan Tiripodi's optimism about uh, BJP coming to power in uh, Tamil Nadu in 2026, you said so? You should uh, ask him to, I mean, keep up that uh, optimism. 
everyone has the right to dream naturally and he also has it see when you talked about i mean uh, south being religious yes we are religious religion itself is against hindutva actually being religious doesn't mean that you need to i mean tread the political uh, uh, ideology of bjp i would say that if you are true religious you would be against bjp that is what is the why is that naturally we are against violence see what did vivekananda speak in chicago this is a country which imbibed all the cultures see he even talked about now there is a uh, israel uh, hamas conflict that is going on he even talked about the israelis being given shelter in south india that was precisely in kerala when that uh, roman empire uh, shattered their shrine we welcomed all the cultures think about the rich diversity history of this country they always talk in terms of 3ds that i mean i would say the g20 had the tagline like uh, what was that democracy diversity development you know what is in real practice destabilize devastate disrupt defeat wherever there is an opposition government they want to distort the government if they cannot distort the government they want to disrupt it if they cannot disrupt the government you defame it you come with a movie called kerala story and defame kerala the most peaceful state in the country is been termed as the hotbed of terrorism and even the prime minister of this country becomes the ambassador of a third rate movie like kerala story which was essentially made to defame a state can you ever envisage such a situation in a country democratic country i have to let nar answer no, no i then, are you finished then sir you respond yeah, he, he is let, let, he is, rec- finish, he is yeah. recording everything diligently <laughs> and i will tell you chetan he is smiling <laughs> see I, one <laughs> Uh, it's coming to the academic uh, i would say the vertical see south has the history of long tradition of reformist movements everywhere in karnataka in kerala in tamil nadu tamil nadu has golden rational movements movements against untouchability <laughs> kerala had sri narayana guru ayyengali see now all those elements of untouchability all those so called caste hegemony all those brahmanical symbols which he had which we had obliterated from our society is being brought back that was precisely my grouse against the prime minister's gesture of carrying a shengol from tamil nadu to parliament with all the sanyasis and i asked what is the relevance of sanyasis in indian parliament have they ever voted in election the prime minister should have invited the panchayat presidents of this country the true representatives of the people rather than carrying this uh, sanyasi is there and prostrating in front of the sanyasis the prime minister is the head of this country head of this government he is not supposed to be i mean prostrating in front of a sanyasi what was the letter written by the first prime minister jawarlal nehru to the first president this is a country where everyone has got their own religion multi religious country it you shouldn't be participating in religious function see if jawarlal nehru had written to the first president now when it came to narendra modi he has become the high priest of all the ceremonies he lays foundation of temples see the idea of india which i carried from kerala has been completely devastated a tweak now so the preamble of the constitution which has got secular democratic do they have a relevance now in this context and uh, i was listening uh, diligently to your uh, session with ptr he rightfully said so india is a union of states what is happening in this country already the southern india i would say that have become a colony of the northern india with 18% population we are contributing 35% of the gdp and we are being penalized earlier chedan you are a voracious reader and a writer we used to say that you perform and you excel you know what is the new slogan you perform and perish you perform and perish that is a new slogan of this government of india and when you talk about the unity and integrity integrity of this country do you envisage a unity in the form of such a gross discrimination that is happening to a region here and kerala is contributing 1 rupee to the national kitty and you know how much we are getting back 25 paise now economically we are dependent we have been made a colony now with the so called delimitation that is hanging on us as a democracy sword they want to make us a political colony also so this is the hapless uh, situation that is now prevalent in this country and i feel that a congle like this which is happening in chennai and with your wife being from tamil nadu has to be concerned about i mean the uh, grouses of the southern states in order to keep the integrity and unity of this great nation thank you